Has your doctor recommended that you take statins in order to deplete your cholesterol? Have you ever wondered what else statins may be doing to your body? Let's take a look at that. Stay tuned. So today we're just going to take a survey of the following topics. First, we'll look at statins and vitamin D. We'll look at CoQ10. Now, I did an earlier video that's more in-depth on CoQ10, but we'll touch on it here. We'll look at vitamin K, and we'll look at the effect of statins on magnesium. And by taking this brief survey on these topics, I'd like to maybe draw some higher level conclusions about this whole aspect of statin. So let's start with the vitamin D confusion. The question we want to answer is, well, what's the relation between vitamin D and statins? Most clinical studies show that vitamin D is not depleted by statins. And so you may be wondering, okay, nothing to see here, folks. Russ, why are you wasting airtime on this? Well, there's a few minor facts that I found on this. First, some studies show that vitamin D may actually decrease triglycerides. In this study population, by about 4.73 milligrams per deciliter, which is about a half a millimole per liter, it was statistically significant. But in my mind, this is not of practical significance. That magnitude of differences in triglyceride levels is actually fairly minor. I mean, that's variation that you may get from day to day. I suppose if you were to take somebody's average over a month when they had a vitamin D deficiency and when they didn't, you might see this difference. To me, it's really not clinically significant. Statin-associated muscle symptoms, which is the pains that we get, is more prevalent when there's a pre-existing vitamin D deficiency. Results are mixed and are mostly negative for reducing SAMs with vitamin D supplementation. If you're deficient or have an insufficiency in vitamin D, you're more likely to get these muscle symptoms, but supplementing doesn't get you out of that. So it seems to have to do with whether there was a vitamin D deficiency right at the start. So let's take a brief look at CoQ10. First of all, CoQ10 depletion is a well-known adverse effect of statins, and the mechanism is certain. Statins interfere with the same chemical processes that produce cholesterol and CoQ10. You reduce the cholesterol, you're gonna reduce the CoQ10. If CoQ10 was something that we wanted to reduce, we'd take statins for that and we'd say, oh, a side effect of this is reducing our cholesterol. Just so happens it's the other way around. It's not certain that supplementation helps. It could be an absorption problem, I know that ubiquinol is absorbed a little better. There is, in my mind, an outstanding question on that, and that is, can CoQ10 supplements cross the blood-brain barrier? Now, one viewer actually made a comment that they don't cross the blood-brain barrier. I have no real way of knowing. I couldn't find any reports on it. Maybe I just didn't look hard enough, but I do have my own personal experience. And from my personal experience, supplementing with CoQ10 did help with the statin-associated muscle symptoms. I did have one period where I had some very painful joint and muscle problems, and I took CoQ10 supplements, and maybe it was placebo effect. They seemed to clear up pretty quickly, so maybe it was just a self-limiting thing. That was my in of one experiment. However, they did not seem to help with cognitive issues. So that would be consistent with the statement that CoQ10 supplements don't cross the blood brain barrier. So now let's look at the most confusing of all, and that is vitamin K2 confusion. First, I found this statement. There will be links in the description. Statins inhibit the synthesis of vitamin K2, which in turn protects arteries from calcification. Well, there are some doctors who are statin hesitant and only prescribe statins not to reduce LDL, but to stabilize soft plaque, and they consider that kind of a good effect of statins. Low-dose statins is what they prescribe. I mean, we're not talking about anything that's going to have much impact on cholesterol at all, and their feeling is that, that it does partially mitigate the bad condition, which is the soft plaque. If you have soft plaque, you have really two goals. And the first I think everybody would agree with, and that is to stop the further accumulation of soft plaque. Second one is a little more controversial, and that is this idea of stabilizing the soft plaque. And these doctors explain that this is why the CAC scores often go up with patients on statins. And if the patient has stopped accumulating more soft plaque, the calcification is just a natural byproduct of stabilizing what's remaining and actually getting the patient out of the danger that's presented by the soft plaque. That's controversial. I know a lot of my viewers probably disagree with it. I'm just putting it out there as a hypothesis that some doctors have. Let's look at this 
website that had that earlier statement. And they say that results of the study, they're referring to a study, which I'm going to get to in a moment, showed convincing evidence of statin damage to cardiovascular health. They found that statins may enhance calcium accumulation in arterial wall, namely by inhibition of vitamin K. The evidence further showed that statins promote transformation of the spotty microcalcifications in the vulnerable atherosclerotic plaque into larger and denser sheet-like calcifications, thus leading to its stabilization. Well, I was suspicious when I read that because when they said that it leads to the stabilization of plaque, they're presenting it here as a bad thing, and they're quoting a study. Well, let's look at that actual study. Well, it said, paradoxically, intensive statin therapy has been shown to increase vascular calcification, that's VC, and to accelerate its progression. Okay, so far, so good, kind of consistent with the statement up above. And then it goes on to say, despite the greater coronary artery calcification, events, that would be cardiovascular events, did not occur more frequently frequently in statin-treated patients. Whether we want to believe this or not, or we want to say, oh, the study was flawed or whatever, this is what the study happened to show. Yet it's being cited by this website as actually not showing that. They're saying that it's convincing evidence of statin damage to cardiovascular health. What they're showing here in this study group, whether we accept their methods or not, that the events did not occur more frequently in statin-treated patients. So this would support the idea that maybe stabilization of the soft plaque is a good thing. To explain the seemingly incompatible pro-calcific effect of statins on the one hand and the regression of the atherosclerotic plaque with improved clinical outcomes on the other hand, a hypothesis has been proposed according to which, and we get this other statement here that was cited above. You notice in the citation it says the evidence further showed that. No, the evidence didn't show that. The evidence showed that there was increased calcification, but there was no impact on cardiovascular event. The hypothesis that was given in this paper was actually presented as evidence in the above citation. It seems that we'll interpret a paper to support our views, whether the paper does or not. And by the way, I acknowledge that that actually applies to me. I don't do it intentionally, but I'm sure I must be doing it at some time or another. So let's look at another statement. Study signals need for vitamin K2 with statin use, says firm. The Norway-based vitamin K2 supplier, I don't need to read any further. So here's another case where it is in the vested interest of the producers of this headline to convince us that it's true. It could very well be true. I'm not saying just because it aligns with the vested interest of a company that that means it's necessarily not true. If there is a need for vitamin K2 supplementation, somebody is going to sell you vitamin K2 supplements. The vested interests of that company would align with what's actually happening. We just have to keep that in mind and take everything provisionally, I'll put it that way. So now let's look at the depletion of minerals. I've seen reports of iron, zinc, magnesium, potassium, and selenium being depleted by statin use. So we'll just look at magnesium. This is from drperlmutter.com, a, a blog that I found from about seven years ago. Now I did look him up on Wikipedia. Uh, he is a controversial figure. The mainstream medical profession doesn't view his opinions very highly. I actually find that's very common with any doctors who don't toe the line and and discuss any kind of alternative diet, whether it is low carb or keto or carnivore, mainstream medical profession, they, they're just against it. So let's see what he has to say here. So what he says about statins. Cholesterol-lowering medications such as Lipitor are intended to lower levels of LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. So far, so good. Mainstream medicine would not argue with that. These prescription drugs bind to fats that are necessary for mineral absorption. Okay, that is a statement of fact. Mainstream medical should either agree or disagree with that, but it's not like disagreeing with an opinion. Either this is true or it's not true. From what I've seen, it does appear to be true. And that would reduce the body's capacity to use, well, any of the minerals, but he's calling out magnesium here. And then he points out that some studies claim that statins and magnesium inhibit the same enzyme, and that is to say that magnesium can actually have a regulatory effect on bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. He does put it in quotes, which indicates to me that he thinks that there's some question about this. I have a question about that. I believe that LDL quite often is bad. It depends on the quality of the LDL. Has it been oxidized? Is your LDL pattern A or pattern B? By the way, I got my test results back recently and it showed that my LDL was pattern A LDL at an LDL fractionation test. And he goes on to say a diet with sufficient magnesium could help reduce the need for statins. That phrase there caught my attention because I see him as at least a statin hesitant doctor. By saying something could reduce the 
need, that's kind of a tacit admission that there is on occasion a need for statins. Maybe he was thinking FH, familial hypercholesterolemia, where the cholesterol values are very high. Maybe he was thinking the stabilization thing that I talked about earlier. The point here is that minerals, whether it's magnesium or potassium or whatever we're talking about, their absorption can be interfered with by statins. And from what I saw on his website, I did not see him selling any magnesium supplements or anything like that. I didn't see him selling anything but books that he's written. I'm not sure that we would say that he has a vested interest pushing magnesium supplementation as being something to do because he doesn't happen to sell them. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? Well, first, statins definitely deplete more than just cholesterol. They deplete some vitamins, they would deplete mineral absorption, and they definitely deplete and prevent the endogenous, that's your body's production of CoQ10. And the depletion mechanisms are well understood. So it's not like, oh, we're just guessing. We looked at some statistics or a study group and they ended up with these deficiencies and we think it has something to do with statins. No, they pretty much know how the statins interfere with the absorption or production of these things. Supplementation, sometimes, it's a key word there, help counteract these effects. And my question is, and if you have any insight into this, please leave a comment about it, could endogenous, that means when these things are produced by chemical processes within our body, be more effective than exogenous sources, which would mean when we take them, say, as a supplement? Maybe it's because if we take them as a supplement, it's got to get through our digestive system. By the time it reaches the organs or bloodstream, whatever it's got to reach, it's too diluted to do much good. I don't know. That's just a guess on my part. But if you have any insight into that, I'd appreciate hearing from you. And finally, just as pharmaceutical companies have a vested interest in convincing us that statins are safe and effective, sellers of supplements have the same vested interest in convincing us the same thing about their supplements. So that's just something to keep in mind. Doesn't mean they're wrong, but your vested interest could coincide with reality. We do have to keep it in mind. So that's all I really have on this quick survey of the subject. If you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this topic or others you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.